it kind of brings me to a topic I wanted to get your thoughts on this sort of um, the, the biohacking movement, um, these like do it yourself CRISPR kits that you can buy online. Um, you know, I've, I've heard about people who um, they, you know, did some gene editing experiments on themselves. They had temporary night vision, you know, crazy things like that. Uh, do you see this um, as being the future of something that could potentially uh, alter, you know, human evolution, uh, modify our behaviors in ways that we might find more desirable? So the, the biggest change I can see potentially coming on a short enough time scale to matter is just some enough people en masse just deleting the mutations from their genome and especially from their children's genomes. Uh, the, you know, the genome is enormously complicated. It's very, really hard to say, to figure out in much detail which are the better genes, especially combinations of them. But we have a lot of ways we can just identify the mutations. <laughs> The, the things that are rarer and probably not good. And uh, it seems that if you just systematically went through a whole genome and just deleted those, uh, that the resulting genome would be much higher quality. It would probably just be much higher IQ, much healthier, et cetera. And so uh, the question is, when will that happen and how many people will do it? Um, and that's a convergence, right? That's a sense in which you know, people deleting the mutations would become more similar to each other. And that would create some sort of super class of people who are just much more capable. Now, the question is, how long will that take? Because of course, it's a heavily regulated area. And sort of in mass deleting all the mutations across the whole genome would be a pretty big change. And the question is, who, you know, who would be approved to do that? How much? And, you know, you might think you'd need some, you know, pool of a thousand people to try it for a whole generation to be get to people to be approved to do more of it. And that's a very long, slow process. Uh, and so, you know, you might think that in a century, then we might have sort of a world scale of people doing this mass deleting the mutations thing. Uh, but of course, in a century, maybe other stuff will happen that make that somewhat obsolete. So, but it's plausible that, you know, within a century, we will just have you know, our descendants just in mass have deleted basically most of the mutations. <laughs> and that would be, you know, again, it, it could double our IQ, could double our lifespans. It could just be a really big improvement, but it would be a way in which we would be similar. So some people are thinking of sort of a fragmentation of genetic evolution. That is our descendants would become more different with each other. And on longer timescales, when you figured out more, that certainly is plausible. But the thing that would be most likely to happen first is just this mask deleting of mutations. And have you considered, uh, similarly to your book, uh, The Age of M, uh, what might be the economic implications of, of something like that? As you said, doubling IQ scores, things like that. Well, they're relatively mundane. So I don't think, I mean, it, it would make the world richer and more capable, but it wouldn't otherwise change the world dramatically. Uh, I think we would be able to pretty easily understand what a world of people who were, had fewer mutations would be. Um, now, I mean, it depends on how far you go in this way. Like, you know, if you, if you just, you're gonna have some threshold of how clearly something is a mutation that should be getting rid of. And there's gonna be a whole range of intermediate cases where it's not so clear. So, you know, the simplest strategy is just to take say the 1% of cases where it's the most clear and then get rid of those and leave the other 99% alone. In which case, you know, the resulting creatures are are different from each other in a similar way that we are. But you could imagine going farther and, and going farther down the line saying, no, well, it looks like, you know, 60% of people are this way and 40% of that way. And let's go with the 60% one, right? You could just go all the way through the genome and just pick the, the thing that had the highest chance of being the better one, uh, even if you weren't very confident. And then that choice is going to make everybody choose the same thing. Right, you're gonna have the, that. That would have this huge convergence where the whole world was basically picking the same genome, and now they all look the same. They all talk the same. They all have the same personality, and that would sort of be the next step. You see, um, like the first step would just be to again take out the one percent of you know clearest mutations, and that gets you know this huge population that's just much more capable, but similarly different, and then you might go farther to 
uh, to, to converge in the sense of being more aggressive to take the versions that you know you had the best confidence were the best, but then everybody has the same one there. And then some people might want to say, well, okay, I want my kids to be pretty good, but I want them to have some part of me. <laughs> now the question is, well, okay, how about your hair color, your skin color, your, your height, you know, let's pick some things that maybe aren't very important. You can keep those. And there'd be some degree of sort of on the surface, keeping some surface differences just so that your kids felt like they were your kids. But um, overall, they're really going to be these generic things that are the same. That would be sort of the next second step. Yeah. And again, that, that would happen, take even longer to be accepted and common. And well, so again, the question is like, what else happens? And you know, will the age of M come by then and make it all irrelevant? Yeah.